Hi guys, this is Benny Liu from NewMediaRockstars.com. I'm here today with Shannon Lee, actress, martial artist, the CEO of Bruce Lee Enterprises, and the president of the Bruce Lee Foundation. Shannon, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Just uh, starting my day here in L.A., doing my Bruce Lee thing. Right on, <laughs> right on, right on. So um, basically, I wanted to start off this uh, interview with a basic but really important question. Um, uh, how is uh, Bruce Lee relevant today? Meaning, like, how, how is he relevant in today's um, digital generation where, you know, content is widely consumed online? Yeah. You know, um, he, I think my father is um, super relevant today for a lot of different reasons, and uh, our hope is to actually make him even more relevant uh, as we can, you know, because I also have another company called Leeway Media, which is a production entity, and we're looking to do more, um, you know, Bruce Lee-related uh, content online and also, you know, through traditional media. Um, we've been working together with Yum Yum F. I don't know if you're of familiar with them, of yeah. course, yeah. Um, to develop some, uh, some stuff to do together online and things like that. But I would say just generally from a, you know, from a philosophical standpoint, my father is super relevant uh, because... You know, a lot of what he was doing in his time is really starting to be part of the, you know, everyday culture and the global community today. And um, where you see things like growth in, you know, MMA and the UFC and all that kind of stuff and where you see, you know, the world becoming a smaller place and cultures, you know, coming together and all that sort of stuff. All the things that he was really about and about self motivation motivation and self-actualization and all those philosophical tenets of his. I mean, they're all relevant today. But I think, um, you know, there was, there's no one else like him. I don't know that, I don't think or believe that there ever will be anyone like him. And he continues to inspire people. And that's why he's relevant. Right, right. And uh, why do you think the legacy left by your father has uh, endured for uh, so long? I think it's because, um, I think, to me, I think it's really because his main goal in life was to cultivate himself and his thoughts and ideas and uh, his own personal self-expression to the point where um, there is no one else like him. You know, he, he basically cultivated the one unique product that we all have, which is our ourselves. And so because of that, you know, he's still around today and still um, not able to be duplicated. Right. I would agree with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, let's talk about uh, social media. Um, okay. You've done a great job in building and managing, um, you know, the Facebook fan page. And, you know, it currently has 2.9 million fans, so congratulations on that. And, um, you know, I, I'm actually, you know, looking through all the posts that you make, you know, you're updating it daily and the fans are really, um, you know, engaging. Um, yes. You know, what are your thoughts on this whole social media movement and when did you realize that this, this would be an avenue to uh, spread your father's legacy? You know, it, it's been a learning and a growing process for us, just like I imagine it is for everybody. Whenever there's a new avenue, a new form of media, a new form of communication that comes about, you know, everybody starts to dip their toe in and then wade in a little further there and a little further. And, you know, I think it's been a, about a year and a half now that we've been slowly growing our um, social media, our Facebook, our Twitter, and that sort of thing. And, you know, I think that it became a really nice um, method of communication, a really nice way to, like, really talk to the people who are the fans of Bruce Lee and who are inspired by him or who, for one reason or another, decided to like a page and to get to understand who those people are, what they want, communicate with them regularly. Sometimes we do stuff that they don't like and we take that as an opportunity to learn from it and grow from it and I think that the fact that our fan base is so engaged um, and and part of the conversation with us is something we really love and something that we really try hard to continue to grow. Right. Um, one of the things um, that uh, 
that we see kind of like a trend is that um, when we interview people that um, were uh, are very experienced in the traditional media realm, um, a lot of them are say that they were reluctant to start um, using social media at first. Um, is that the case for you? Um, I don't know if we were really reluctant. I think we just didn't know a whole lot about it. Mm, right, right, <laughs> so, right. <laughs> um, so, you know, we, we weren't reluctant. We really wanted to, it, I think, like everybody else, we were like, well, social media, everybody's involved in social media, and I suppose we can too, but, but you know, what what is it exactly? It, how can it be beneficial? Can it be not beneficial? What do we need to do? Is it a, is it a dialogue, you know? Um, it, it, you know, I think everybody, it took us a while to understand it really is a dialogue and you really need to engage, you know, with with everybody. It's not just, I'm going to put out something and whether you like it or you don't like it or whatever, not care. You mm -hmm. know, you really have to care, I think, in order to be successful at it. Right. Um, in terms of like, um, you know, speaking of which, um, what have been some specific things that you've discovered is the best way to reach out and, you know, uh, promote to um, your father's audience? Um you know, do you see a pattern where certain content you post does better than the others um, and that drives more engagement? Yeah, definitely. And um, I, I would say, you know, we try to post fairly frequently um, a photograph with maybe a quote um, on it that people are really inspired by, number one, his image, and number two, his words. And that that's an easy thing that people can share, you know, and, and get a little, you know, inspired jolt of inspiration from as well or just go like oh that's cool or whatever it is you know and share that around so we definitely see that um we definitely um you know we really see it as our mission is to continue the legacy and and by that we mean to continue to inspire people in the way that they are inspired when they watch a bruce lee movie you know and then the way they're inspired when they discover that he had a whole philosophy and and all of that kind of stuff and the way that they're inspired when they find out what he went through in his life. So, you know, that's kind of a tall order. We, we try to do it in little, right. you know, fun bite-sized right. ways. But um, um, people like the photos. They like the quotes. They like it I, when they get really personal content. Um, they really like it when they, um, you know, something with I found is like when we've posted like from my mom to from my dad to my mom, you know, or we've posted something that he wrote in his daytimers, or when we've posted a favorite poem of his. I think they really like that human connection to feel like Bruce Lee is a human and not just you know a superhuman like he appears to be. <laughs> right, right, right. No, that makes sense. <laughs> well, actually, that 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 um, I was going to ask that um, towards the end, but um, I guess I'll ask you now since it's kind of a good lead-in. But um, you know, a, a lot of people you know blindly idolize your father and you know put him on a pedestal, and a lot has been said about your father's strengths and talents. And but from your recollection, what your family has told you, you know, what 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 were his weaknesses? His weaknesses. Um, you know, he was. Um, um, he had weaknesses like everybody else so from a very, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, from a very um, utilitarian point of view, he was not good at fixing things around the house, <laughs> you know, he was not handy with, with, uh, with his tools and things like that. <laughs> um, he had a temper, you know, he could get really riled up and flap the handle and, and yell and, um, the, the good part being, though, that he could also be very introspective, so he could calm down and <laughs> right, <laughs> apologize. Right, right, right. Um, he was, um, you know, it all depends. Like, my, my whole thing is I always say, like, our strengths are also our weaknesses mm. and vice versa. You know what I mean? So, in a way, it's sort of like some people might have said, he was way too driven. He was way too this. He was way too that. Yeah, well, that's what got him to be where he was at the same time. So I'm sure on a personal level, there were a lot of struggles in that regard um, because he was, you know, obviously very, very focused and very, very driven. But um, he was a great parent. He, he really loved us kids and all that. And at the same time, you know, he was have to sometimes leave in order to make money to support the family and you know it, I think it's the same human struggles that everybody has to be honest you know you know to, to keep his 
his own issues, his own things in check, just like we all do. Right. Unfortunately. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was a hustler. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, um, you know, uh, how, how do you see yourself and your role in keeping up with what your uh, father left behind? Um, you know, do you ever feel like, you know, you're, you're purely under a shadow um, or any, yeah, just anything like that? Yeah. Uh, you know, um, yes and no. I mean, if I'm being totally honest, um, there are times when I think, well, there are a lot of things that I, you know, want to work on and want to be able to do or um, want people to see me for me and not see me for Bruce Lee's daughter or what have you. But at the same time, you know, that's not a huge, crazy struggle in my life in the sense that I'm like every day like, oh, it's so mm -hmm. difficult. Uh, it's just every now and again, you know, it's like, um, it's like I love coming to work every day and I love doing all this. And what is part of what makes me love it is that the legacy to me is so worthwhile. It's so full of so many, uh, so much worth, you know, there's so much depth of meaning, so much inspiration for not only the world, but for me personally, you know, so I get to come here and, you know, absorb the energy of all this and try to share it out with the world, which is something that I personally do love for myself. And uh, if occasionally some people can't, are a little bit blinded by, um, you know, by, by dad's name. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. That's really, that's really their issue. It's not really mine, you know. Mm. And, uh, and uh, I will say, I mean, there was one instance when I was making, when I was acting in my 20s and I was making a movie in Hong Kong and the, we were, it was a big action movie. It was my first, like, really big action movie. And the director was saying, you know, okay, do it again, do it again, do it again. And then finally he said to me, just do it like your dad would do it. <laughs> oh, like, man. Oh, okay, yeah. No, <laughs> no problem. Exactly, you know. right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, so um, personally, you know, I would be lying if I said, oh, no, there's never any struggle. It's always just fine and perfect. But I would say that the benefits hugely outweigh any of any of those types of things, and uh, I feel very blessed. Right. That's awesome. Great, great, yeah. great. Um, you, know, uh, in, uh, you know, right now, certain videos from this generation have characters that are clear knockoffs of, you know, your father, like Fei Long from Street Fighter and Law from Tekken. I mean, what, right. do, you, what do you think of these characters that your father inspired? You know, I mean, what do they say? Imitation is a form of flattery, right? Right, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, I can I, I can look at it from both sides, right? On the one hand, I would love for there to be, and something that we are actively um, wanting to work on, is for there to be a Bruce Lee, a real official awesome Bruce Lee video game, right? right. At the same right. time, the fact that everybody associates him with the pinnacle of martial arts, with the pinnacle of action and cool and everybody wants to emulate him in their games and pay homage to him it's fabulous it's beautiful great i love it, hey, love it. yeah um so uh moving on uh to movies um you know there have been two movies um uh depicting your father's life in detail to date you know one was made in the u.s and the other was made in hong kong and which uh in which the, in the hong kong one and noted in the beginning that this was purely bruce lee's side of the story a uh, bruce lee's family side of the story and, you know, what, what are your thoughts on the uh, Hong Kong film, um, and uh, do you keep in contact with your father's side of the family? Um, I am in contact with my father's side of the family, though. I don't see them often, um, and it, it's rather loose contact, and it, it ebbs and flows sometimes at points in my life. I've seen them more than others. Um, I have to say, and this is just really really bad on my part, but I haven't actually seen that movie. <laughs> oh, okay, that's no, that's no problem, no, <laughs> right. But, um, but um, I heard a lot about it, and I, and I obviously am going to watch it, but, um, so I don't really know the content of that, of that film that, you know, intimately. Right. Um, um, 
the dra- the film Dragon, um, you know, I, I can't speak to any of the pluses or minuses in the film that my father's siblings did. Um, but I, in terms of Dragon, I mean, I think there were pluses and minuses to that film as well. You know, I think the spirit of that film was really nice. I think that they did, to a certain extent, capture a lot of the energy of my father and his legacy. Factually, it was a bit of a train wreck, and um, <laughs> and um, Hollywood, right? that whole, you know, that whole device that they used with the spirit that he was battling. I understand it was it was supposed to be, um, you know, a device to sort of speak to what perhaps his own inner demons were. But to me, it was very high, not done. Um, done a little bit more flashy and unnecessary, if you ask me. But um, but overall, I think that film is a good film from the standpoint that it, it told my father's story, the essence of his energy, the essence of his struggle was there. Um, I, would, I would love to see another film um, uh, a, about his life that really... That really got it right. What yeah. is your opinion of the of my uh, family, my father's family's film? Have you seen it? Yeah, I saw it. I, I thought it was pretty interesting. I mean, uh, you know, uh, per- personally for me, I, I enjoyed it. You know, I, I actually liked it more than um, the uh, the um, the U.S. one. I mean, I, I really I feel that um, you know, for me, it, it the Hong Kong one kind of captured um, the essence of uh, you know your father a little bit better. But, you know, that's my personal opinion. But you should definitely watch it, though. I, I, I um, you know, as a viewer, I did enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. No, I definitely want to watch it. Yeah. Definitely. And I also saw the uh, the documentary, I, the I Am Bruce Lee documentary. Um, that was really, uh-huh. really good. I mean, I, I, that's the best documentary I've seen of him, like, to date. So, you know, I was yeah. impressive. Yeah, we really love that, and actually, that documentary is now just the 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 DVD, the US DVD release has just launched, and and we're selling it in our store at brucelee dot com. But um, um, I thought that was a really wonderful documentary. I was really really pleased with how it came out. Um, I thought the director Pete McCormick did an amazing job, and um, that to date it is the best documentary. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Well, you know, speaking of like, you know, movies and video content, um, you mentioned that, um, oh, I see that you have a YouTube channel already and, you know, you're uploading, it seems like you're uploading one video per month that includes like clips of your dad, you know, and um, your brother and also uh, some personal vlogs. Um, you mentioned that you're working with Yang Yang F, which is, you know, uh, definitely one of the biggest uh, YouTube networks right now. And, um, yep. you know, explain, uh, uh, tell me more about um, your plans for YouTube and what you plan on doing uh, with Yang Yang F. Yeah, well, um, we're, we're hatching our plans with Yam Yam F. We're working on um, creating a series for, you know, maybe starting with like six small webisodes or something and then growing it from there if it goes well. But um, uh, right now, the stuff we're talking about is a little more comedic in nature, you know, though still surrounding the legacy, obviously. Um, but we're we haven't fully um, drilled down onto exactly what the what the show idea is going to be, but um, we're having a lot of fun trying to figure it out. <laughs> right, 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 right. And um, in terms of YouTube, you know, we would we do have our own channel, um, and we would like to to grow that more and um, put more of our own content up there. We are right now um, um, working on a mini documentary for the bonus materials of the 40th anniversary Blu-ray of Enter the Dragon that will come out this nice. in the summer. So, um, you know, we're, st- we're really starting to ramp up our production side of things. We want to get new, um, new content out there. Right on. Cool, cool, cool. That's more than documentary content, you know. We'd really like to, to create some creative projects. Right, right. Um, and for um, your YouTube channel in particular, I mean, um, I don't know if... Uh, you know the that um, all these YouTube networks are you know kind of growing and signing on uh, you know different talents and stuff like that. Um, do you guys um, uh, do you have any plans or um, any any uh, desire to maybe uh, join like a YouTube network? For uh, um, we don't have any plans at the moment as to desire. Um, I think there's potentially some desire there. It would depend on you know exactly exactly what we would 
do. <laughs> right. No, that makes that makes perfect sense. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we're always looking for new, new and interesting ways to grow and to reach more people. So we would definitely um, be interested in exploring that. Okay. Great. Uh, and then uh, my second to last question, um, you know, uh, regarding to your, regarding your father and your brother. Um, you know, there's there's always, there's been a lot of speculation to date. You know that your father's and brother's deaths were all somehow part of this big conspiracy, and and you know people have dubbed the, like the Bruce Lee curse. Um, you know, what are your personal thoughts on all that all that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I think that um, I understand it from a cultural standpoint, I guess, but I um, obviously don't think that there's a curse. Right. Um, right. If I did, I would probably be afraid to leave my house house every day (laughs) (laughs) for fear of being run down or something but um you know I think that there were they were two very tragic and um circumstances uh that were very different and and it and it was very unfortunate that they happened to happen you know for the most part almost exactly 20 years apart and um that it's easy to grab any similarities and look at something like that. I'm sure there have been many families that have had more than one tragedy within them and people don't go around calling that a curse and that's because they're not famous and in front of the public eye. You know what I mean? So to me it's like, you know, it was a, it was a a, a very unfortunate thing that happened, has happened in my family, but you know, it, it gives me the impetus to just keep on going and living my life to the fullest, so. Great. Um, and uh, my last question is, uh, you kind of mentioned this above already, but uh, do you have any other uh, big projects that you'd like to reveal to us at this time? And uh, where, where would be the best place for um, our readers to go to to kind of see what the, what the latest happenings are at, you know, at Bruce Lee Legacy? Okay. Um, yeah, well, I mentioned that the U.S. DVD release of I Am Bruce Lee is, a, is out and available. Um, people can obviously go to brucelee.com. We've got a, a fun store and a lot of, um, you know, videos that we post on YouTube and that you can connect to through our site and all that sort of stuff. We're having a big fundraiser on February 9th in Seattle, Washington um, for the Bruce Lee Action Museum which is a project um, that uh, the Bruce Lee Foundation is undertaking to build a a facility um, dedicated to my father's legacy and in particular to his legacy of action. We really want... um, we really want it to be a living institute more than a, you know, just a memorabilia museum. We really want to focus on the different types of action that he undertook or came across in his life, whether it's martial or filmic or philosophical or cultural, and to explore that through his legacy as well as being able to explore it through other people's legacies as well. And um, we really want it to be a... Uh, uh, this amazing project. So we're having a fundraiser February 9th um, in Seattle for anyone who last minute wants to take a trip to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're looking to put it in Seattle because, you know, my, my father and my brother are buried in Seattle. Mm-hmm. And it's already a place that a lot of people go to to visit the grave site. It's where he had his first school. It's where he met my mom. He went to the University of Washington. So that's um, all a lot of reasons that Seattle seems like a good fit. Um, you can go to brucelyfoundation.org to uh, look at the works of the foundation and to read about the event. Um, pretty soon we're going to have a Bruce Lee Action Museum website up probably in the next few weeks. Um, we have at Bruce Lee Legacy on Twitter. We have our Bruce Lee Facebook page. Um, we are also putting a um, working, just launching a project next week. Uh, to put a community peace garden on the campus at the University of Washington dedicated to my father. That's great. So, I mean, you know, there's just a lot going on. Like I said, the the bonus materials for the 40th anniversary of Man of the Dragon, and there's just a lot happening all the time. <laughs> That's good. Keep it busy. That's always nice. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. So if people, you know, follow us a little bit through our various avenues, they'll definitely be kept apprised of all the happenings. Cool. So, and oh, yeah. I have to ask you this. Um, do you do you have any cool like uh, um, 
uh, Bruce Lee relics that you that you that you have kind of at the house or anything that you can show us or uh, not at the moment. <laughs> I, mean, I just have to ask. It's true. You know, we have, um, I'm at my offices right now, and we have um, the archive here. I should mention, actually, we're opening on, uh, in July, I'm not sure if I have the date yet, a three-year exhibit with the Hong Kong Heritage Museum. Oh. So we're actually sending over more than 500 items of my father's personal effects to be displayed at the Hong Kong Heritage Museum Um uh, in the summer of this year. Oh, awesome. So, uh, so we have some stuff. I don't know. Should I run and, and grab something uh, it, to show you really fast? So, okay. uh, what kind of relics would you like to show us? <laughs> 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 so this is the headstone. Um, I don't know if you know what this is, but my father had this made. It's really heavy. It's like made out of iron. And um, it says on it, in memory of a once fluid man crammed and distorted by the classical mess. And he asked his friend George Lee to make this for him. And that, and that came out of, in 1965, he had a challenge match with um, uh, the Chinese uh, martial arts community in the Bay Area. They challenged him because he was teaching martial arts to non-Chinese and they were all up in arms about it. So they challenged him to a match, and if he won, then he had to stop. If he won, then he could keep going, and if they won, then he had to stop. And he he entered this match with their champion that they brought over, and he won mm. in three minutes. Nice. But at the end of it, instead of being super happy, he was kind of um, upset. And, and he was upset because he was upset with his performance, he really felt like um, his physical fitness level wasn't as high as it should be and that his training in traditional martial arts in Wing Chun um, had not really prepared him for to encounter this type of uh, all-out, no-holds-barred battle. And so that was really the impetus of him starting to break away and wanting to and creating ultimately his own martial art called Jeet Kune Do. And so what he did was he asked George to um, create this for him in as sort of a symbol of his death, as you will, to the traditional martial arts and then his rebirth back into fluidity. That's amazing. amazing. So, yeah, so he had this created. And then, um, do you want to see the glasses again? Yes, please. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would love to see the glasses. <laughs> and then, yeah. um, these are a pair of his eyeglasses that he wore. This may look look like something Bruce Lee would have worn. Um, and you can tell, one of the reasons I love them is because you can see how absolutely nearsighted he was. I mean, if you look at the distortion in the lenses, and then also from the side, you can see how thick they are. They stick out past the frames, which these frames are pretty thick. So, right. <laughs> so he was very nearsighted, my father. He almost always had glasses or contacts on. So, you know, I just like that human element yeah. to him. So. Yeah, because to us, he's like a superhero. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He was a very nearsighted superhero. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great. All right. Well, um, you know, thanks a lot for joining us. You know, I appreciate, you know, t you taking time and everything. So. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for contacting us. I'm, I'm happy you, you noted our progress and that, we're, and that we're getting out there, and I appreciate the time as well. Yeah, you guys are doing a great job. It's, it's amazing. Thank right. you. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.